So far, really impressed with the M600S. I mean, given the fact that we're able to run Spider-Man Miles Morales at 1440p like this is pretty awesome when you consider how small this thing really is. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Morphine M600S. This is one that I've actually been waiting on for a little while, and uh, as you can see on the box here, this mini PC comes from the future. Now what we've got here is a full-fledged gaming PC, and we're actually able to run AAA games at 1440p, and uh, as you can see, this thing is actually really tiny. It's not as small as some of the other mini PCs that we've taken a look at on the channel, but we're working with a dedicated GPU in this. We don't have to rely on integrated graphics because this does have a dedicated RX 6000 series GPU, and uh, in this video we're going to be doing a lot of testing, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Inside of the box, you will get a few accessories with the mini PC. We've got a vase mount, so we can actually mount this to the bottom of a desk or even the back of a monitor. Hardware for mounting a 2.5 inch drive internally, along with the data slash power cable. Our power supply and the 6 foot HDMI cable. And if you're not familiar with the more fine brand, that's totally fine. I'll leave some links in the description. But we have taken a look at a few of their newer mini PCs on the channel. And with their newer line, we've got this kind of honeycomb design on the top. I think it looks good. And uh, as you can see, this is actually packing a Ryzen 9 CPU. The last one we took a look at was a Ryzen 6000 series mini PC. And I just want to give you a little size comparison here. Obviously, the M600S is much larger, but it's still a super small form factor PC, and it's going to be putting out a lot more power than we can get out of integrated graphics right now, because we've got that dedicated RX 6000 series GPU. Taking a look at the unit, it's very sleek. Up front, we've just got our power slash reset button, and on each side, we've got some ventilation. So the way it's set up right now, it's really meant to sit horizontally unless you have a stand for it because we're going to draw air in one side and push it out of the other with the dual fan heatsink array they have in here. And moving around back, we've got a lot of I.O. It really makes up for not having any on the front. We've got two audio jacks, line in, line out, dual gigabit Ethernet, four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.2 ports, USB Type-C, which is also 3.2, Two full-size HDMI ports, we've also got a full-size display port, and our barrel jack for power in. So the first thing I wanted to do was give you a look at the internals. It's actually really easy to get in here. There's four screws on the bottom, along with some rubber feet that need to be removed. And inside, we've got kind of a little mounting plate for the fans. Another four screws. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out real quick. Now we can remove that mounting bracket, which holds both of the blower fans here. And uh, as you can see, we've got that full copper heat sink. This thing does stay nice and cool and quiet, even though this needs to cool an 8-core, 16-thread CPU and that RX 660M. In order to add that 2.5-inch drive, you will have to pull that bottom plate off and everything, but we've got a mounting bracket right there for it. When it comes to RAM, obviously, we've got dual-channel SODEM and one PCIe 3.0 M.2 drive. So I kind of wish there was another M.2 slot in here for an extra drive, but we can always add that 2.5 if we need more storage. Jumping right into the specs here, for the CPU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. This is a proven CPU. I mean, it works out really well for gaming. 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.6 gigahertz. But the main claim to fame here is that dedicated Radeon RX 6600M. We've got 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, 
and it is the 145 watt version, so we're going to see some great performance out of this GPU. The PC itself supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. We've got one PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot, and it will support up to a 9mm 2.5 inch drive, be it an SSD or a mechanical. We've got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and this will support Windows or Linux. In this video, we're going to be running Windows 11 Pro, and I'm really excited to show you how this thing performs with 1440p gaming. Before we take a look at everything else and run some benchmarks, I wanted to show you at least one game up front here. We've got Horizon Zero Dawn 1440p Ultra with FSR set to balanced. Very impressed by how well this is running. We're getting an average of 73 FPS, and you know, with all of my games, I don't mind locking them down at 60. I do consider a system like this great at 1440p gaming with some FSR or going down to high settings, or 1080p maxed out with no kind of resolution scaling. It'll basically run anything like that. Okay, so here we are. I've got Windows 11 Pro up and running. I've installed a bunch of applications and games that we're going to be testing out. But the first thing I always like to do is just check out the TDP on the CPU and even the clocks on the GPU because they can differ between different manufacturers. Now, uh, first thing I'm going to do here is just run a quick bench here with a uh, CPU Z. We've got our power from just the CPU, 64 watts, and I bet that's a boost. It'll probably drop down. Yep, 54 watts. Not bad, but this CPU can run at much higher TDPs and keep those clocks up. I think we're going to be good at that 55 watts because we don't need to use the internal iGPU with this chip. We're going to be using that dedicated GPU. And speaking of this, we've got 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Boost clock is stated as 2174, but this will actually go higher. About 2245 is the highest. It's not going to hang there for long, but uh, I mean, it can definitely boost up a bit higher than uh, GPU Z is stated. Very impressed with the performance so far, and uh, with everything we're going to be testing out, I'm not going to do any kind of overclocking. From Afterburner, we could actually up the GPU clock and we could up the TDP on this CPU to get a bit better performance out of it, but we're going to leave it at the stock configuration just to see exactly what we can do kind of out of the box. And before we start testing out more PC games, I did go through and run some benchmarks. And the first one here is Geekbench 6. We got a single core of 1,884, multi 8349. Definitely looking like a Ryzen 5900HX. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Here's Firestrike, 20,982. And the final one here is Time Spy with an 8,271. So, I mean, just looking at these synthetics, given the form factor, this thing's putting out some really great performance. But I definitely want to test out some more PC games to show you what this thing's all about. Next on the list, we've got Injustice 2 at 1440p, maxed out. With a system like this, fighting games aren't going to be an issue. Mortal Kombat 11 run the same kind of settings here. And, you know, if you wanted to take it down to medium 4K, you could run games like this also. Something like Street Fighter V, you know, an older fighting game, you can max that out at 4K and it's going to run at 60 all day long. So this is great for fighting games. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077 1440p with a high medium mix and FSR is set to balanced. Unfortunately, at all high settings, you will have to take FSR all the way down to performance to get over 60 FPS, at least steady over 60 FPS. So mixing it up a bit with FSR set to balance that 1440p is awesome. Or if you don't mind playing at 1080, you can go to ultra with it. But with it set up like this, we're getting an average of 82 FPS. GTA 5, I knew it was going to run well, 1440p, we're maxed out here. At 4K, I mean, we're right on the edge there. I was getting an average of around 64 FPS maxed out at 4K. So 4K high settings is possible with this game on this PC. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, Spider-Man Remastered is also going to perform the same. 1440p, very high, FSR set to balance. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do consider this a 1440p gaming machine with some FSR or taking some of those settings down. Now at 1080, you're going to be able to run basically everything that you want at ultra settings, but you know, taking that resolution up, you will have to use a little bit of resolution scale.
I had to throw at least one racing game in here, and we've got Dirt 5 1440p high settings. At very high settings, you will see some dips under 60, and even now you can see we're kind of getting close. With dynamic resolution scale enabled, you should definitely be good to go, but I kind of wanted to see what it would do without it, and we're getting an average of around 64 FPS. God of War was another one I wanted to throw in here. 1440p Ultra FSR balanced. I was actually impressed that we could do Ultra here. Now we're right there at an average of around 76 FPS, so taking it down to high will allow you to definitely get over 60 at 1440p. But uh, for my use case scenario, I think it's performing absolutely amazingly. And the final game I wanted to test here was The Last of Us Part 1. Now, if you've tried this on PC, at least in the first couple weeks of it being released, you know uh, it didn't perform really well at all. But uh, they have patched a few things. Performance is getting a bit better, and right now we're at 1440p high with FSR set to balanced. I'm going to tell you right now, outdoors, it's going to drop under 60. So you might want to take that FSR to performance, or just take all of the settings down to medium. Before I wrap this video up, the final thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption. So this is important to a lot of people, and when people are looking for a mini PC, they expect it not to pull a ton of energy, but we're working with kind of a different beast here. This does pull quite a bit when you compare it to other just integrated graphics-based mini PCs. At idle, 22 watts. Average 1440p gaming, this is pulling 180 watts from the wall. And the maximum that I saw this draw from the wall in an extreme use case scenario, I was maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time to 100%, was 229 watts. So much more than an integrated graphics-based mini PC, but you know, when you compare it to other larger PCs, this thing's sipping power. Overall, I'm really impressed with the M600S, and there is some more testing that I'd like to do. One thing I'd love to run on this is a Linux distro, something like Steam Deck OS, so if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning more about the M600S, I'll leave a link to more finds website in the description below, and if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But like always, thanks for watching.